on a data bi sql so in today's video uh, right we will uh, go through the question number 34 uh, which is part of the amazon uh, sql interview questions uh, and uh, i have already done part up to part 33 which is uh, you can say see it in the playlist which will be in the comment in the description section of this video as well so i'll add this to that playlist as well um, so let's get started with today's uh, video and then this kind of interview question, right? Uh, uh, you can see that it can be asked in the uh, Amazon SQL interview questions or it can be any fan companies, right? Meta, Meta or Google, you know, all these companies, uh, uh, this this kind of questions has a, has a potential to come up. And um, uh, in basically uh, today's video, right? Uh, um, is a classical example where you know you need to have a data knowledge uh, uh, right uh, before and, and if you don't see the data properly that is presented to you in the interview you can make a mistake uh, right so uh, uh, let's let's get started with uh, with with the question uh, in today's uh, video and then we will see you know where uh, the potential mistakes can happen so uh, this is the table name jobs underscore salary underscore dim right uh, and so what uh, if you look at this table it's pretty a straightforward table as in there's id then there is a job id then applicant id offer received offer accepted uh, salary uh, offer and, sal and final salary right so uh, uh, see for any any of these interview questions right or e even in the practical life when you're working it is very very necessary to understand the data uh, right the reason i say that is because you need to understand the relationship within the data so if you see between a job ID and applicant ID, what is the relationship? It's many to many, right? So what do you mean by many to many? One job can be applied by multiple candidates, as you can see, right? And then one, one uh, uh, basically one applicant can apply to multiple jobs. So if you see here, right, 310, or if you take an example of, let's say 315, 315 applicant ID applied to a job number 10 and job number uh, 20, uh, job number 10, and job number 30 also right so obviously it's a real life scenario right i mean uh, you can apply to you know 10 15 20 30 jobs right at a time and then uh, after that the offer received and offer accepted right so even you could receive an offer for both you cannot you might not receive offer for both right uh, if you you can receive three offers and you just choose one right so, you know, there are multiple combinations uh, that can happen, right? And the interviewer can ask questions related to that, right? So that's why I say that it's very necessary to understand the data, uh, right? So let's get started with the question they have. This is display those candidates who received two or more offers, right? So what it is asking you is to display those candidates, which means applicant ID, who received two or more offers, okay? So basically, like I say in my videos, you need to break down the question into different parts. So first is display those candidates. Display those candidates means what? The applicant ID, right? That's what they want to do. they want us to display. Who receive two or more offers? So two or more offers means uh, basically they are asking you to filter the number of candidates, right? Who received more than two offers or two or more offers? To, so get it on the equal to, right? So if you want to find out the count, right, I mean, the candidate will receive two or more offers, you need to use a count function, right? And count of offer underscore received, right? And since we use the uh, uh, aggregate function, we need to use a group by clause, right? So I have covered group by in my other videos as well. So I request you to please look at those videos as well. So when we say group by, it's going to group by the applicants uh, and it is going to, uh, you know, group by uh, the count, right? Count of offer received for that applicant, right? So how does filtering work? The filtering will work that we want to find out the count, right? So what we'll do? Count of offer received greater than or equal to two, right? So if you run this query, you get five different candidates where as you are having, um, you know, more than two offers, two or more offers. Uh, now you need to think, is this a correct answer? Uh, I mean, this is where the trick part comes into the picture, right? 
So display those candidates who received two or more offers. Okay. So who is received two or more offers? So we covered two or more offers right here, but have we covered the received part? Right. And what do I mean by that? So if you see the table, right, let's go and look at the table. Okay. So if you go and look at the table, right? Okay, I put from two times. So some of the candidates did not receive an offer, right? So let's say for this one, you received the offer, this one you did not. So let's go and look at the candidate that came up here, right? So at 315 and 320. So if you look at 315 and 320, 315, you got an offer, yes, right? Job ID 10, then 30, you got an offer, right? Yes, okay, so, so, so 3 and 15 should come. Let's look at 320. He got for job ID 20, right? But then is he waiting on the time? Twenty is only time. Okay. Three twenty apply to twenty. Apply to three. offer only for twenty uh, for job ID. You're not getting an offer for job ID thirty. So he should come. He should not come. To count. Right. So fill like this. If you look at this the 20 was coming, right? So 20 should not come. So what did we miss? We missed another condition, right? Now, where do you apply this condition, right? So first of all, we will have to apply this condition using a where clause, okay? So where clause, what we will say, offer received is equal to yes, right? Then only it will work, right? So now let's go and see how many candidates are coming up. <clears throat> so T20 is not coming. Right, so that means this is the correct answer. Okay, uh, now you will say, can we use where and group by where and having together? Yes, absolutely you can. So what is the what is the difference between where and having? Where will apply the filter on each row of the of the data. Okay, so what do you mean by each row of the data? So when we put where condition, that's why you see where is coming before. Okay, so it will. Or go in this order select the candidates then from and then where okay so it is going to search each and every row and it's going to apply this filter so so what will happen is it will only up till this point in the query it will only filter those records which which has offer received equal to yes and in that case 320 will fall off for job id 30 okay because it's no right and then we are applying the group by and having right offer is greater than 2 so this greater than or equal to 2 will apply on this data set right so moment you apply yes 320 will have only one and here we are saying greater than or equal to 2 is going to filter out that record right so you can absolutely apply where clause and you can use having all also you know so many people have this kind of um, uh, kind of understanding or illusion that you know you cannot use where and having together no you can use it you know both have different functionalities where is at a row level filtering, having at a, at a group level filtering, right? So by, when you're doing a count and group, on this group, you are applying this filter for having, okay? So that's the difference between where and having. This is another interview question, right? I mean, what's, uh, where, when do we use where, when do we use having? What's the difference between where and having, right? Can you use both of them together, right? So the classical example of using it together, right? So basically three or four questions, different scenarios we covered in this particular uh, ready, uh, in, in this particular video sorry uh, is basically count function uh, group by and having with that filtering using where filtering using having right and what's the difference between fil between where and having right so many concepts are covered right so yeah uh, so that's it for it today guys you know so uh, few learnings from this video understand your data understand your data very well uh, even in the interview look at the data first and then form your query, right? That's going to help you a lot in practical scenarios, practical your work also. If you're already working as an engineer or, an, or a data analyst, you should, uh, you know, look at the business case uh, first, then look at the data properly, understand the relationship between the data, 
and then you know you can uh, uh, go and write the query that will give a confidence also to the interviewer you know you can ask question to the interviewer that you know uh, you want only offer received that means yes right you can ask that question you know interview will really like it that you are asking questions and making it interactive okay like you know uh, they really like it that you are trying to understand the data you are asking the questions right uh, so so just go with that uh, kind of mindset and then you know you should do good uh, all right if you have like like my videos uh, and uh, please subscribe to my channel and like my videos so that uh, i press the like button so that it encourages me to make more videos thank you guys